In this video, we're going to continue working our to-do list app and we're going to replace the text view that displays the list of to-dos with a recycler view. Let's get started. Let's take a closer look at how a recycler view works. Under the hood, a recycler view is a view group of other containers. Starting out at the outer layer, we have the recycler view, which is going to hold a set of view holders. And these are going to be responsible for, you guessed it, holding the views. Now in order for us to tell the recycler view how to display the data from our database, we have to create an adapter. This is going to adapt and bind the data from our database to the views inside our recycler view. This all works a little bit like those conveyor belts you see at the airport. As you scroll, the views move through the visible area of the screen. Once they go off screen, they are recycled and only the data inside of them is updated. Then the same view but with new data is sent back on the screen and displayed. Let's begin by going to our apps build.gradle file and we'll add a dependency for recycler view and card view. And these are both part of the Android Jetpack libraries. Next, be sure to sync your project. Now we're going to create a new layout resource file and this is going to contain the views that will be displayed for each to-do item in our to-dos list. We'll name it to-do item. Switch over to the code. Make some space here. And now we're gonna change this constraint layout to a card view. Let's go ahead and add the app namespace. We'll set the layout height to wrap content. We'll add a small margin of 8 dp. Set the corner radius to 10 dp. And we'll give it an elevation of 4 dp. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and add a checkbox view inside of our card. We'll set the width and height to wrap content. Set the text size to 16 SP. We'll give it some padding. And for now, we'll set clickable to false. This is something we'll be modifying in the upcoming video when we work with diffutil. Now let's go ahead and add an ID to our checkbox. And that's all we need to do for our layout file. Now let's get ready to work on the adapter. As we said earlier, it is the adapter's job to bind the data from the database to the views that will be displayed in our recycler view. Let's create a new Kotlin class. And we are going to name this to do item adapter. This will extend the RecyclerView.Adapter class. And we'll create an inner class called ToDoItemViewHolder. This will take a parameter of RootView, which will be a reference to our card view, and it's going to return a RecyclerViewViewHolder. Now we're going to need a reference to the data from our database. So we'll go ahead and add a data property. And this is going to be a list of to-do items. And we're going to go ahead and add a custom setter. And this is so we can call notify dataset changed. This will allow the adapter to update the views in the recycler view whenever the data list changes. Now here, Android Studio is telling us that notify dataset changed is not a very efficient way to update our recycler view, but we will be modifying this to use diffutil in an upcoming video, so we will keep it here for now. Now let's go ahead and override the getItemCount method. And we'll set this to the size of the list of to-dos. 
Next we'll begin building out our to do item view holder by adding a reference to our checkbox view from our layout file. So here we can use our root view argument and call find view by ID. Make sure to set the type to checkbox and we can call r.id and we'll use the ID we declared earlier to do name. We need to import the R class. Here, as you can see, it takes us right to our layout file and our to do name ID. Now, we'll also add a companion object here to our view holder, and inside, we'll declare an inflate from method. And this will allow us to inflate the layout file for our view holder when we call the onCreateViewHolder method later. Let's get a reference to our layout inflator with the parent context. Now we'll use that to inflate our view using the layout file that we wrote earlier, making sure to cast it as a card view. And now we return our to do item view holder with our view. Now we'll also declare a bind method, which will take a to do item from our database and use it to update the properties of our checkbox view. So here we'll call to do title and we'll set its is checked property to whether the item is completed. And we'll set its text to the item's title. Now we'll go ahead and implement on create view holder. So we'll override this from our super class. And we'll set this to to do item view holder, inflate from parent, and we'll also override on bind view holder, which is called by the recycler view to display data at a specific position so we can use that position integer to loop through all of the items in our list of to do's data set. Next, we can call holder and use the bind method we wrote earlier to bind our item data to the checkbox view. And that's it for our adapter. And now it's time to modify our fragments layout file to have a recycler view instead of a text view. So we'll go ahead and change this text view to be a recycler view. We'll set the layout height to 0 dp so that we control its height by the layout weight property. We'll set the gravity to top. And we'll add a linear layout manager, which tells our recycler view to display our list of to do's in a vertical list. Now we can go ahead and update our fragment file to use the recycler view. So we'll navigate to our to do's fragment and we'll create a reference to our adapter. This is going to be an instance of our to do item adapter. And we'll use our binding object to bind it to our recycler view. Now we'll need to do just a few modifications to our view model so that we can work with live data using our recycler view. So previously we were doing this mapping and formatting. Uh, now we can work directly with the live data and we don't need these two methods to format the list of to-dos. As you can see, our to-dos list is a live data which we can now observe from our fragment. So let's switch over to our fragment file. And here we can call the to-dos property from our view model and observe it. And here we can say any changes to our to-dos list. 
it's nullable, so we'll use a let scope function. And we'll update our adapter's data with it. And now any changes to our to-do list from our database will get reflected in our recycler view. Let's go ahead and run our app. And now all of our to-do items are displayed inside of our recycler view. And as we add new items, they get populated and we can scroll through them. Finally, let's go ahead and add a bit of styling to our recycler view. So let's go ahead and create a color provider object inside of our utility package. And here we're going to define a list of colors using color.rgb. Now I found a really neat site called coolers.co and here there's so many really beautiful palettes that we can use and I'm going to choose this one that's a gradient of purples and blues or teal and you can copy the hex value or you can even select for it to give you uh, the color as an RGB and then if we switch over to our code we can just paste the list of colors here and I'm going to add a method here to get color from resource ID and we're going to give it the position and that's going to return a color integer. Now we'll return our colors list and we will use the position modulo colors.size to cycle through all of the colors in the list. Now we can switch over to our recycler view adapter and inside of our onbind view holder we can set the card background color using this new color provider and pass the position of the item in our recycler view. Now when we run the app we can see that each card in our recycler view now has these awesome colors. Now at this point you're probably going to want to show this app to your friends because they're going to be so impressed and blown away by your progress and how awesome your app looks. And definitely stay tuned for part 3 of this series where we will talk about using diffutil with the recycler view. Thanks for watching.